This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Today it's all about this rather lovely guitar that has been loaned to me by a viewer of this channel. Um... It is a Duesenberg Star Player TV. Uh, maybe you saw me giving my first impressions uh, rundown of this guitar on Thursday, and I said that today that uh, you know we'd be kind of doing the usual kind of uh, more in-depth review of the guitar, proper shakedown, uh, weights and measures, all of the usual kind of stuff, and we'll get right into that right after we've heard what this guitar sounds like in a mix. And as always, you'll find a full tab for that piece of music in both Guitar Pro and PDF formats, along with a clip of me playing it and a jam track to play along with yourself. All of that is up on my Patreon page, as I'm sure you know by now. $3 or £2.50 a month gets you access to all of these goodies that go along with these YouTube videos. A massive, massive thank you to everyone who supports me in that or any of the other ways, all of which are linked down in the description. Um, so I'll tell you exactly what I think of this guitar. Oh yes, another bit of housekeeping uh, before we get on to the the meat of the review settings I was using in that piece of music there. Um, the crunchy power chordy sort of stuff was uh, the vintage channel on the blue guitar amp one, and the high again lead stuff was exactly those settings there, but with the uh, new X Horseman pedal thrown into the front end of it. A great little pedal that, if you're not familiar with it, well worth checking out. Uh, the clean stuff, the uh, sort of arpeggio kind of um, chordy sort of stuff, and the clean lead was the clean channel on the blue guitar amp one. Um, I could have used my usual kind of thing of just going for sort of edge of breakup sort of tone and then um 
dialing the uh, the guitar's volume control back to clean it up. But I just think the uh, the the clean channel on the blue guitar amp is uh, more of a Fender kind of character rather than Marshall kind of character on the vintage channel. And just for clean tones, um, the the Fend on this guitar, the Fendery kind of character, I think suited things better. So that's what I ended up going with. Um, Let's take a look at some weights and measures for this guitar. There is a little bit of a surprise in here, and we'll come to that as we go through. Uh, but you can see here we've got a weight of 3.26 kilos, uh, a nut width of 41.8 millimetres, which is probably, you know, a 42 millimetre nut, and that's just kind of the, within the margin of error, um, you know, within tolerance, basically. Uh, you can see the 1st and 12th fret neck profiles there, very comfortable, I would say, sort of C-shaped neck. Um, quite sort of fendery feeling in the hand um you know and a very low nice action on this guitar it's very slippery and fast despite it's sort of more retro kind of 50s sort of look it feels like you're playing um a really kind of modern high spec guitar um you know the action wasn't that low when um when the chap who loaned me this guitar dropped it off uh, and i said i can probably get that action down a little bit for you and he said oh would you um so i did and now it's absolutely kissing the frets really really low and as i say slinky and slippery to play on the uh, the surprise comes when we take a look at the dc pickup readings you can see the bridge pickup is 8 point uh, what have I got written down here? 8.35k. Uh, the neck P90 is uh, 5.64k. And the surprise is that when we flip to the middle position, both pickups in parallel, uh, we get exactly the same reading as the neck P90. Which, that is a bit of a surprise, and I'll tell you why. Um, back many, many, many uh, moons ago, decades ago in fact, back in the 1980s, I uh, studied electronics at college. I was uh, going to have a life on the ocean wave as a Merchant Navy radio officer. Uh, didn't quite work out that way because I absolutely suck at Morse code. But anyway, I got the electronics qualifications. And I spent many a sleepless night back then uh, swatting up on, um, I believe it was Kirchhoff's Laws which govern, um, you know, kind of how resistances work in a circuit. And uh, bear with me on this. When you have, um, you know, multiple resistances connected in parallel, like the resistance of this humbucker and this P90 in parallel, which is what you get when you've got the pickup selector in the middle, uh, according to uh, my memories of uh, my old college notes, um, the overall resistance will be something less than the lowest individual resistance of the uh, of of that that's actually in in that parallel circuit in this case the uh, the p90 in the neck but uh, the overall resistance is exactly the same as the P90 in the neck. So obviously there's, um, you know, something amiss here, some kind of wiring fluke that I'm not aware of. I did at first think it was a wiring fault, but it isn't because let's just take a quick little uh, listen to um, the sound of the pickups on this guitar. I'm going to go bridge, neck, and then middle, and you'll hear that there is a distinct and different sound coming from each position on the switch, like this. <laughs> So I think we can clearly hear three distinct sounds there from um, the, the three different positions on the switch. Um, but that just, that kind of, um, that resistance reading did get me puzzled a little bit. I checked it several times to make sure I wasn't, you know, kind of imagining it. But uh, maybe my memory of uh, my college notes from nearly 40 years ago is a little bit defective. If you are... Uh, a little bit better educated and a little bit more recently educated in the topic of uh, you know parallel resistance readings and Kirchhoff's laws and Ohm's law and all that kind of stuff then leave a comment down below anyway before we get digress too far down that track let's tell you what I think about uh, the guitar um, these guitars I think are about the two and a half grand kind of uh, mark I think that's roughly what I, I remember seeing on the Anderton's website so it's it's not a cheap guitar um, 
and it doesn't feel like a cheap guitar and it certainly doesn't sound like one it's a very comfortable um you know kind of guitar very sort of well balanced you know it's got a semi hollow body here i'll put a link to the spec down in the description but uh from memory i think the uh the the headline figures are maple neck one piece and then you've got laminated spruce and maple uh for the um for the body so you know when this bit is lighter than it would usually expect to be because a lot of it is made of fresh air then there's always the danger of neck dive but as you can see very well balanced um you know it doesn't it, it doesn't take any kind of effort to hold it in place uh while you're playing it doesn't detract from the playing experience um it's a comfortable guitar uh plays beautifully as i said you know kind of low slinky slippery very modern feeling uh feel to this guitar you know kind of it, it belies its sort of vintage and retro looks in a lot of ways um it's it's a very bright sounding guitar you know um i was found find i was having to use the tone controls um especially on the high again stuff in that demo piece the tone controls the tone control i should say there's only one i was having to use the uh, tone control to tame it a little bit during that uh, those high gain parts um also during those high gain parts even playing at sort of the the kind of volume i get away with in this room here it was um starting to succumb to a little bit of uh, of, of howl round and feedback it's me being a bit of a spanner it's not basically um this guitar's fault it's not intended for playing you know with big high gain sounds but i, I like to kind of include those so people can hear what they sound like so it's a bright sounding retro looking um comfortable um well made you know great little guitar but it's it's not a guitar that enthuses me if i'm honest um that intangible kind of um for want of a better way of putting it x factor uh, that makes you want to reach for this guitar rather than that guitar repeatedly the one that you kind of habitually think yo i want to play that one um i've had this guitar in here over a week now and um i just find myself not really wanting to pick it up and and have some fun on it it's I, and I, I can't say oh it's because this doesn't sound the way i like it or that doesn't feel the way i like it i can't point to anything that i find is um you know deficient or that i don't like but yet it just doesn't kind of give me that internal fizz that uh, the hairs on the back of my neck if there were any still there uh, don't stand up you know and and make me kind of um all happy and excited when i play this guitar it's a lovely guitar um but unlike the um the music man axis super sport that was also that i reviewed recently that was also loaned to me by the same chap who owns this guitar uh that guitar i could barely put it down you know it was like it was a real wrench to have to give that one back if i'm honest uh this one you know it's it just doesn't kind of it hasn't had the same effect on me no doubt that is a me problem, not a Dusenberg problem, but I just thought I would mention that. Um, certainly go, and go out and if you if you're in the market for a guitar in this kind of price bracket, it is um, you know something that should be on your shopping list to go and check out, um, especially if you like this kind of aesthetic and this kind of look. Um, you know, uh, certainly go and check it out, but it's it's not really. A guitar that i think i would spend that kind of money on if i had that kind of money to spend at the moment which i don't so there you go anyway chaps that is uh my uh quick little review of the Duesenberg star player tv as i say full link down in the disc uh, full spec uh linked down in the description uh so that's the review make of it what you will hope you've enjoyed the video and found it informative and useful and hopefully a little bit entertaining in some small way and if that's the case please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not drop me a like while you're at it don't forget the live stream every friday 5 p.m uk time we drink beer and talk about music and guitars great way to kick off the weekend and i'd love to see you there if you can make it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now